Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build Hangman in Python. And you can see here I have in my terminal, I have a little Hangman game going where I can guess a couple of letters. So I'll do like a D. And if you guess the letter incorrectly, it prints out D not found, tells you how many attempts you have left. It tells you the word that you've currently guessed. Um, I should probably add spaces so I can see like how many characters there are. And if you guess wrong, it starts putting a player on the board. And then if you guess the letter correctly, it will kind of reveal the letters that you guessed. And I'll just keep on going. The word ends up being apple. So if you guess it right, the you win, the player wins. If you guess it wrong, notice that the man is going to get put onto the uh, hanging thing, whatever that's called. So that is what we're going to be building. So that is what we're going to be building. And just a side note, I'm not really familiar with Python. I work full time with JavaScript. So this is kind of an experiment for me to kind of dive into a new language, learn how to use it. So if there's anything I'm doing that you find strange or there's an, a more efficient way to do it, please just let me know. So let's go ahead and get started. So I went ahead and kind of listed out a couple of steps we can follow so we can kind of stay in line of what we're trying to build. And the first step, I'll read through these really quickly. We pretty much want to set up some type of array to keep track of the word that we're trying to find, and also an array for keeping track of what words we guessed. So I'm going to be using lists for those. And then the game logic is pretty simple, right? We just keep looping until the player is either won or lost. And inside that loop, what we need to do is kind of display the board or the current state of the board. We need to display the letters that the player has guessed, and we need to display the attempts that the player has remaining. And then we ask the player for some input. We tell them to enter like a character or something. So that's this step here. And then if the player has guessed the letter correctly, or if that letter is found inside of that word, what we want to do is pretty much print a message, show that they've guessed the correct letter, and if they guess wrong, we print a failure message and increment the attempts. And then if the player has um, one, spelled that wrong, we want to print a win message and then stop looping. Same if the player has lost, we print a failing message and stop looping. Now for number nine, this is the one where you need to kind of go through that hidden list and start putting characters in. So if you guess like the P, we need to convert the underscores to P's. And if you guessed, um, oh, and then you need to go through the word and kind of zero out those P's so that you can't guess them again. So for the first step, let's just go ahead and start setting up some lists where we can keep track of the word that we're looking for and the characters that we have guessed. So I'm going to declare a variable called word. And what I'm going to do is cast a string to a list. And I'll just provide a word apple. And this is a method where if you pass it a string, I'm sure you could pass it other things, but it basically will convert this word to an array of five length with A, P, P, L, E in each element. So that should be pretty straightforward. The second variable we need, which I will call hidden, and I'll set that equal to an empty list. And what we want to do is loop through every character of the word and put that inside the hidden array as underscores. So there may be a better way to do this, a more elegant way, but I'm going to stick to what I know. So I'm going to say character of word. So for every character of word, and I, actually this is in, for every character in word, we're going to do hidden pinned, and I'm just going to go ahead and append a underscore here. All right, so that should give me a, an array of five underscores. So let's just go ahead and print those out. So I'll print out word, and I'll print out hidden. And I'm using VS Code, so if, if I want to run this, all I need to do is press this play button up here, and that will run my Python code. So if you see here, we have a list with Apple in it, and we have a list with underscores. So we're making some progress. Step one's done ton more steps left to do. So this next step, loop until either the player has won or lost. So I'm going to do um, just a while true. 
and then I'm going to break out of that loop further down in here. It's probably not good practice to do a while true. What you could do instead is say like while um, is game over. So while not is game over, and I will say false. And basically what this is going to do is keep looping while the game is still playing. And we will update those down here, right? So if the player wins, print a message, stop looping. The player loses, stop looping, etc. And we can update those in a second. But let's move on to the next task. I think we got the loop going pretty well. Um, so at this point, we want to display the current board, uh, the guest letters, and the attempts remaining. So I'm going to do the first, the last two here because they should be pretty straightforward. There we go. Can't spell today. So how do we print out the attempts remaining? Well, we could just say print and then pass it a variable, right? But we don't have attempts. So let's go ahead and up here and declare attempts. So this is the number of attempts. My goodness. Sorry, this is early in the morning and I'm not typing well right now. So I'm going to say attempts is equal to zero. That's how many attempts the player has made. And then I'm going to declare another one called max attempts and set that equal to four. All right, and this will be how we check if the player lost. But what we need to do is just print out those attempts. And one thing you can do is you can do F and then pass it these quotes. And then I could say you have attempts remaining. So if you're not familiar with this, what the, what the F function is, Basically, you can do string interpolation here where I pass it a string. Then inside the string, I can print out some variables and that will just print out. So let me just go ahead and try that out. See what happens. It says you have zero attempts remaining. So cool. You printed out how many attempts are left. Let's also print out the guest letters. So we can say print format um, the current word is and then in here we want to do some more string interpolation so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to print out what the player has guessed currently right so right now it's just going to print out a bunch of underscores but instead we want to print out underscores and like the characters that they guessed and it turns out this hidden list is what we're going to be keeping track of that with so what we can do is just do a, a join with an empty, empty quotes. And I'll pass it the hidden array. So what this does is it basically takes every element of the list, puts spaces in between them, and then it prints out a string. So let's run this again, make sure that we are on the right path. And we almost were, but we forgot to, what did we do wrong? Maybe this needs to be outside. Let me try this. Okay, I guess you can't do like actual function calls inside your string interpolation. You have to use variables. So that's something new I'll have to research. Or if you have any suggestions as to why that wasn't working, let me know. But it looks like you have to actually pull out these dynamically generated code into a variable in order to use it inside this print formatted function. But anyway, you can see down here, we have it printing out. You have zero attempts remaining, and then the current word is blank, 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 blank. So making some micro progress, let's move on to displaying the current board. All right, so one way we can do that is just, just do a bunch of print statements. And I'm just going to do five spaces and then five of those. I'll do some of this. Oops, but bear with me. I'm just trying to figure out a good, uh, a good artistic format for displaying this stuff. That should be good, right?
All right, let's print this out and see what that looks like. So we're just trying to print out a board, and then we'll later come in and print out the actual hangman guy when we make mistakes. All right, so I'll open up my terminal just a little bit. And you see here we have that hangman noose printing out. Cool. So we'll, we'll come back and we'll have to change this up a little bit so that we print out the head if you've done one attempt, the arms if you've done two attempts. You know what, let's just, let's just do it now. We're here, why not just do it? So what we wanna do is in Python, I think there is a way to do ternaries or like conditional prints. So what I can do is I'm gonna say empty string if a temps is equal to zero. Otherwise, we need to print out a head, right? And you know what, let me flip that. So if attempts is equal to one, we're gonna print out a head, else we print out nothing. So let's see if this actually works. I'll set attempts to one. I'm gonna rerun this code and let's look at what we got. All right, we got a head printing out. And in fact, I think it should be if greater than or equal to one or greater than zero, because if you have attempts two or three, you still wanna print the head out. So I think this will work. Let's just go ahead and do the rest for the arms, the body, and the legs. So if attempts is greater than one, two, or three, print out the body, or the, sorry, the arms, the body, and the legs. All right, so let's just go through these and make sure that nothing is broken. Mm. I'm not sure what's going on there. Looks like it kind of just overwrote. I think we probably need to use some type of parentheses around this. I think it's combining the stuff to the left of the statement. So let me just try this and see what happens. Yeah, I believe that's the issue. And again, this is my first time really like learning Python. I've done it some in the past, but I don't work with it that much. So that was just a grouping issue. Um, let me try setting attempts to two, make sure that the hands print out. They do print out the three, body prints out, print out four, the legs print out. All right, let's go back to attempts of zero and let's go ahead and try to keep on making progress. So we got the man printing out down here. Now we need to ask the player for a character, right? So one function or helper method you have in Python is input and that is gonna prompt the user to type something inside of the terminal down here. So I could say, please guess a letter. And if I run that, it's gonna print, please guess a letter. I can type in something like W, hit enter, and my program is gonna break out for now because we have this break statement. But what we need to do is actually keep track of that letter. So in here, I'll say letter, guest is equal to this input and let me just scroll down a little bit so you get more context as to what i'm doing so we get the letter guest and we ask the user to guess a letter and now we say if the player guessed correctly so how do you check if a player guessed a letter correctly well you probably want to loop through the array up here that we have and check if you found a letter that's expected. So one way you can do that is you can say, um, using the keyword in, you can say if letter guest is in the word, then we can do something. And then otherwise we probably wanna do something else, but we'll do that in a second. So if the letter guest is inside the word, that's when we need to go through and set all instances of this letter to an empty string or to an underscore or whatever, and then also loop through the hidden and place that character. So one way I know how to do that is with a for loop. So what I can do, in fact, I'm gonna probably have to Google this because I don't know how to get the, the index when you're doing a for loop. So Python loop 
over string it index. I think I could do like for i in length of character. Okay, that's how you print out a string. Print out, here it is, range. So if you use range, it'll generate a sequence from 0 to n minus 1. And each index will be that. So, I think we can just do this. So, loop over the word. And then the character is going to equal to the word of i. And what we can do, in fact, we don't even need that, I don't think. What we could do is we just say word of i is equal to an underscore or an empty string, whatever you want to do. But the important part is hidden of i is equal to word of i. And I think this needs to run beforehand because we're going to clear it. We're going to update the hidden array and then clear out the original word. So what we do here, let's just print out these, make sure that we're on the right path. I also, also probably use a debugger, but. I'll print out P and see what happens. So if letter guess is in word, we loop through this. And I don't think this worked. So let's figure out, find out why. We are here 0, 1, 2, 3. Oh, wait, it did work, but okay. I totally forgot a very important step. We need to check if the character we're at is equal to the word that we guessed. So if character is equal to letter guessed, then we need to replace the thing. Okay, so welcome to live coding, ladies and gentlemen. So if I guess P, okay, so now we have hidden here. It reveals two Ps, and then we have the original word, is apple without the piece. So why is that useful? Well, now we can guess p again, and it will give us a strike, right? We'll get something wrong. So at this point, I could actually remove the break now because we have an input function call. So it's not just going to loop forever. So if I load this up and type p, notice that the current word is that type a l. And I'm not going to type e because that might be an infinite loop. So Making some progress, making some progress. So the next step, if the, okay, so if they guess correctly, we need to pretty much update the stuff and we need to print a message. So we totally forgot to print a message. What we need to do here is say print you guessed correctly, letter guessed is in the word. And make sure you format that if you're doing string interpolation. So let's just double check. Every time I make a change, just run it if you can, double check. So it says, you guessed correctly, P is in the word, and then it revealed some Ps. And it says, you have zero attempts remaining. That's definitely a bug. Why? Oh. So this needs to be max attempts minus attempts. And again, I don't know if that'll work, because I don't think you can do... I guess in some cases you can do math. I don't know why we ran into an issue with here where I couldn't do this inside of the string, but I will learn soon enough. Okay, so I'm gonna take a breather, just get some extra oxygen. And back to it. Okay, so if we have guessed the letter correctly, we print out a message. If we didn't guess the letter correctly, so you can do an else if, like this, print down a message you guessed wrong is not in the word. And then we need to decrement attempts by one, or increment by one, I mean. So I'm going to say attempts plus equals one. And I think that's all we need to do. If the player guessed wrong, print a failure message. The player guessed right to do this stuff. This seems to keep complaining about my else if. Invalid syntax. Oh. 
just else, not else if. Right on. Okay, so if the player has won, print a win message and stop looping. How do we check if the player has won? Well, one way we could do it is we just loop through word and verify that everything has been set to an underscore. Or we could loop through hidden and make sure we don't have any underscores. Or we could always just keep track of like how many things you guessed correctly and then compare it to the length of the word. There's different ways to do this. But the way I plan to do it is just loop through every time and check if the player has guessed all the letters. So one way you can do this is you can use a, a all function and you can pass that in iterable. So I might be doing this wrong, but I, I need to actually look this up. So let's see, Python, check if all elements in list are true. I've used this in the past. I don't remember off the top of my head. And one way to get good at coding is to memorize things you're going to do a lot. So I think this is something that's probably useful. Looks like you just need to say, do your Boolean statement and then a for loop. <clears throat> so if everything inside of Word uh, or care in Word. All right, so loop through the Word character by character. And if every character is equal to underscore, then the player has won the game. So I will just print out a message. Congrats, you won. And then we need to stop looping, right? So is game over will become true. Capital T. And then we need to check if the player has lost. So if the player has lost, you basically just need to check if attempts is greater than or equal to max attempts. Then we just print out a message saying, you lost, rest in peace. Let's try it out. Let's try our game. Hopefully we uh, did this correctly. If not, we'll have to debug. So let's click the play button. You have four attempts remaining. Your current word is this. Got the little news printing out. Please guess the letter. I'll press P. I pressed enter a bunch of times, my bad. Um, let's just restart this. You know what, let me add some spaces because this is just a little, a little much after you guess the letter. So I'm just gonna do like three new line, four new line characters, just so it's easier to know when we guessed and when we didn't. So let's try it again, guess P. You've guessed correctly. P is in the word. You have four attempts remaining. I'll guess Z. Z is wrong. You have three attempts remaining. Q, W, and then E. Well, E was in the word, so we still have one attempt remaining. I'm going to guess E again. And if I guess this, it should fail and end the game. You guessed wrong. E is not in the word. You lost. Rest in peace. Okay. That's awesome. Let's test the other case. So if I actually guess everything correctly... It says we won. So there you have it. With a couple of snags along the way, we managed to build a cute little hangman game in the terminal. <laughs> and again, if you are familiar with Python and you know ways to kind of improve this code, like I'm sure there's a easier way to do this. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. You can... Clarify with me what happened here. Like, I don't know why this wasn't working. You know what? Let's just, let's just try that out. We got all the time in the world, right, ladies and gentlemen? You ain't got nothing to do today. All right, so if I try to actually do this inside of that string interpolation, it fails. I don't know why. Does this seem to be single quotes? It does. Wow. Okay, so this needs to be single quotes if you're doing these double quotes in here, I think. I think that's my I think that's the issue. Let me just try this. Wow, that's frustrating. 
Cool. So, yeah, if you are doing this string function and you try to do double quotes inside here, it's going to break. So we've solved that problem. Awesome. My Python skills have increased by one point. All right, so we did some inputs. Um, there's got to be a better way to do this. There probably is a more sufficient, con concise way to do this. And if there is, just blast me in the comments or do a PR pull request. Uh, let's see. Everything else is pretty straightforward, right? This is pretty cool. It's probably an elegant way to do check if all or set to this. And this is pretty straightforward too, right? Make sure that we haven't exhausted all of our attempts. So that's it. That kind of sums up this tutorial. Like always, if you have comments, questions, or concerns, blast me in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching this. And I'm probably going to do a little bit more Python videos in addition to my other JavaScript stuff. Just because it seems like Python is pretty popular, at least for beginners. So I might kind of go back and forth and see if Python's more popular in terms of my subscribers or if JavaScript's more popular and just kind of gear towards what my people want to watch. So thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Cody Seibert.